Hey everyone, in Physics 40S, this is Lecture 3, Electric Potential Energy. I'm Dr. Carroll, we're looking at Unit 6, and we looked at descriptive electrostatics and Coulomb's Law in our first lecture. We looked at electric fields in our second lecture, and today it's electric potential energy. And surprise, surprise, everything's related. You're going to like this lecture because there isn't many vectors, aren't many vectors in here. It's mostly scalar bits of information. You do have to worry about the algebraic sign, though. So we've looked at potential energies before, gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, conservation of energy. Here we're looking at electric potential energy, and I'm on... Uh, Excuse me, page 18, we have here E electric is what we're using for electric potential energy, E sub E, U E or E E L. Again, uh, remember that the E L could also stand for elastic, so we have to be careful we're talking about. Let me change the spelling. There's scalar, S C A L A R. It is a scalar, the electric potential energy. It is a sign whether the system is doing the work uh, or whether you have to do the work on the system. And the uh, equation for the electric potential energy is simply kqa qb over r. I know it looks a little like Coulomb's law, but Coulomb's law is kqa qb over r squared. So there's a difference uh, between the two. But I think of work as like um, kind of energy, then uh, you can do some tricks to derive this. Notice that the units work out to give us uh, the appropriate units of uh, Newton meter, which are uh, joules. One Newton meter is one joule. So uh, let's look at an example here. We have two charges, A and B, one coulomb, uh, one coulomb each, super far away from each other. We can say that's infinitely far away. So the electric potential energy is 9 by 10 to 9 times 1 times 1 over infinity, so it's zero. Now, if we squeeze those so they're just one meter apart, then the new electric potential energy is K, 9 by 10 to the 9 times 1 times 1 over 1, which is 9 by 10 to the 9 joules. So the work done to bring a charge, one coulomb of value, up to another charge, one coulomb of value, so the distance between them is one meters from infinity, is the definition of electric potential energy, technically. So work is the change in energy, that's always true. So it's 9 by 10 to the 9 minus 0, or 9 by 10 to the 9 joules of work. So E electric represents the work done to move QB from infinite up to a distance R from Q. And if it's from one meter, then it's 9 by 10 to the 9. Yeah, I guess in general, the work would then be putting a bracket around here. K, Q, A, Q, B, 1 over R final minus 1 over R initial, right? Because work would be change in electric potential energy. So K, Q, A, Q, B over R final minus K, Q, A, Q, B over R initial. So K, Q, A, Q, B. 1 over R final minus 1 over R initial. Okay, let's scroll down a bit here. Um, let's go to example 2 on page 19. Here's an ar initial arrangement. We have A is 2 microcoulombs and B is 4 microcoulombs and they're separated by 20 centimeters, which is of course 0.2 ohm meters. So the electric potential energy of the system is K 9 by 10 to the 9 times 2 by 10 to the six, minus 6, times 4 by 10 to the minus 6, over 0.2 joules. So it's 0.36 joules. That's how much energy is stored electrically if you put those two groups of charges 20 centimeters from each other. It's positive, meaning that if you let them go, they're going to move away from each other. The system is doing the work in terms of repelling A from B. Now, if we want to move QB closer, we want to get the change in electric potential energy. Okay, so uh, I could also then get the final potential energy, which I do in part three, which is 0.9 joules. So to get the change, that's the work done. So 9 by 10 to the 9, 2 by 10 to the minus 6 times 4 by 10 to the minus 6. That's KQAQB 
We aren't using absolute values here. Times 1 over our final. So if it's 12 centimeters closer, it's 20 centimeters difference initially, and 12 centimeters closer would mean now you're just 8 centimeters between A and B. So 1 over our final, 1 over 0 0.08 minus 1 over 0 0.2. So you get 0.54 joules. So your final potential energy is uh, the 0.54 joules plus the 0.36, right? The electric final would be delta E electric plus E electric initial, right? So that's delta, let me write it out here, delta E electric plus E electric initial. Okay, so let's look at an example three here. Anyone notice that I switched from a blue pen to a red pen in lecture three, just to spice things up? Um, no, uh, we have two elementary charges and negative eight elementary charges. They are attracted to each other at uh, 0.11, that's not 0.11, that's 11 centimeters. Okay, get rid of that. It's 11 centimeters from each other. So first I'm going to convert the elementary charges into coulombs by uh, well, one elementary charge is 1.6 by 10 to minus 19, 19, two is twice that. So 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and uh, minus 1.28 by 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. So work is nine by 10 to the nine times 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 times minus 1.2 by 10 to the minus 18 one over our final, so one over 0.22 um, minus one over 0.111. Now, where did I get the 0.22 from? Ah, calculate the work done on the system to double the distance. Okay, so see the two EC and the negative eight EC are uh, attracted to each other because they're opposite charges. So you have to do work to push them apart. How much work? 1.6 by 10 to minus 26 joules. Example four, we have a vertical arrangement here. We have a five microcoulomb charge and a three microcoulomb charge. And the distance between the charges is six centimeters, which is 0 0.06 meters. And we wanna get the electric potential energy of the system. It's gonna be positive because both charges are positive. So nine by 10 to the nine times five by 10 to minus six times three by 10 to minus six over the distance between them in meters, 0 0.06. So you get 2.25 joules. It's not joules to the left or north or south, it's a scalar. So that is the electric potential energy. Just for a bit of, uh, we practice review the electric field at point B. Now I guess I'll call this one A and this at the bottom B. The electric field at B would be due to A and it'll be pushed south. So it'll be KQA over R squared. So K times five by 10 to the minus six over 0 0.06 squared. 1.25 by 10 to the seven Newtons per Coulomb to the south. The force on QA, well, using Coulomb's law, it'll be going north. So nine by 10 to the nine times five by 10 to the minus six times three by 10 to the minus six over 0 0.06 squared. So I just snuck in some vector quantities there for the force and the electric fields at points and then we started example four by getting the electric potential energy okay so that's uh useful that actually comes useful in uh, the world of chemistry especially when it's related uh, to uh, attacks of uh, nucleophiles electrophiles all sorts of neat uh, pharmaceutical applications for electric potential and electric potential energy. So let's look at uh, electric potential here. And um, the electric potential is also called uh, just the potential or phi or the electrostatic potential or the pot. And uh, lots of books use uh, the symbol uh, phi, Greek letter phi. Some of you might know it as the null set or the empty set in uh, physics uh, and in math. Uh, the capital Greek letter phi is like this, which is used for all sorts of things, but not for what we're looking at. We're gonna look at lowercase phi. Some books use V, 
which I think is not a good choice. Uh, capital V is really the difference in electric potential, uh, not the electric potential itself. So I'm not going to use capital V. I'm going to use phi, which the majority of books, I think, use. So all it is is, is the electric potential energy per charge. Just like electric field was the electric force per charge, electric potential is the electric potential energy per charge. So if you were doing one of these like Miller analogy tests or something, you would say electric field is to force has electric potential is to electric potential energy because you're dividing by charge for both of them. So we see the equations there. Electric potential is E electric. If I need like QB mean the charge that I'm uh, looking at, uh, that I'm moving around. So it would be KQA over R because the QB would cancel out. The units are not just joules, they're joules per coulomb. And it turns out that a joule per coulomb is the same as a volt. And I've given you stuff with kilograms, meters squared, and amperes, and to minus one second to minus three. That is the base derivation of a volt. But a volt is also called a joule per coulomb. So one volt is one joule per coulomb. Okay. Uh, so now we go to the next page, which I realize is upside down. Oh, boy. Let's see if I can do this on the fly. Rotate. Rotate. Did a double rotation there. Let's do it again. And again. And now I've gone to way uh, over here. I want to be on page uh, 20 in our uh, booklet here. And um, I'm doing a bit of a fly over here. And uh, We'll get to all this in a few minutes. 23, 2, 21, and 20. And 20's upside down. So I'm going to pause for a second to get that fixed. That's funny. Okay, let me pause it. Okay. I did two 90 degree rotations, which made a 180 degree rotation, right? So here on page 20, we want to calculate the potential, and it's also a scalar, um, at a point 20 centimeters to the east of a 4 microcoulomb charge. Now, it really doesn't matter whether it's the east, west, north, or south. All that we care about is the distance from the point in real three-dimensional space that we're evaluating the electric potential at from the source charge. So the source charge is 4 by 10 to the minus 6 uh, coulombs and uh, there we go. Um, so my potential kqa over r. So 9 by 10 to 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared times my source charge 4 by 10 to minus 6 coulombs divided by 0.2 meters, and I get 1.8 by 10 to the 5 volts. And you see the closer you are to the source charge, the smaller the value of R, the greater would be the potential. Further, the larger the value of the source, the uh, greater the potential. So um, the potential, 1.8 by 10 to the 5 joules per coulomb. Okay, so that's the potential. Now suppose we put a real life charge at that point here, at uh, where there's now a star, let's put a three microcoulomb charge there. We could get the electric potential energy of the system by just doing KQA, QB over R, but you could also just do this. You now know what the potential is, so that is the joules per coulomb multiplied by the amount of coulombs you put at that place, which is three by 10 to the minus six, and you get the electric potential energy. So that's a much smoother way of doing the question. You know the potential at some point, throw in the charge at that point, multiply them together, and you get the electric potential energy of the system, which turns out to be 0.54 joules. Okay. So now let's take a look at example two. Calculate the potential at a point 300 millimeters to the left of a minus nine nanocoulomb charge. Okay, so nanocoulomb 10 to minus 9. So you got minus 9 by 10 to minus 9 coulombs 
and you want to look at uh, 0.3 meters to the left. So your potential phi kqa over r, 9 by 10 to 9 times negative 9 by 10 to the negative 9 over 0.3. So it's negative 2.7 by 10 to the second joules, or negative 270 joules per coulomb. So electric potentials can have negative values associated with them. Now, if I plunk a one coulomb charge at that point, well, the electric potential energy is just one times negative 270, so negative 270 joules. So that means to separate them, you would have to do work because these two charges would be attracted to each other. Okay, let's go to example three. At a given position in a set of charges, the potential is 250 volts or 250 joules per coulomb. Calculate the potential energy if a four microcoulomb charge is placed at that position. So here we have uh, no uh, background as to what the charges are to create the potential at 250 volts. We don't know how many they are. We don't know what the values are. All we know that at some point in space, the electric potential is 250 volts. So to get the potential energy, you just multiply the volts of the potential times the charge you plunk in at that space. You plunk in four by 10 to minus six coulombs, four microcoulombs, and you have 250 joules per coulomb, so you get one by 10 to minus three joules. So the electric potential energy, one by 10 to minus three joules. Uh, I can't use the KQA over R or any of those because I don't know how many source charges are um, working together and I don't know the distances, but I can answer the question by using the QB times phi. Fourth example, we have a system with 100 joules of electric potential energy and then uh, we put a 2EC, which is 3.2 by 10 to minus 19 coulombs. At some point, we can get the calculation of the potential at that point. So we're probing the field, probing the electric field, because of course, if you have electric potential energy, you're gonna have electric fields. Uh, so your phi is 100 joules, that's the electric potential energy, over QB 3.2 by 10 to minus 19 coulombs and you get a uh, value of 3.1 by 10 to 20 volts. Large amount but that's what the numbers tell us. Okay so that was some use of just on its own uh, electric potential and electric potential energy. You can just like with electric fields have more than one source creating the electric potential. So more than one charge can create the electric potential. So the net electric potential, you just add them all up from one to capital N, right? There's my summation sign, phi I, sum from I equals one to N of phi I. So that's phi one plus phi two plus phi three plus yada, 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 plus phi N. Okay, we won't look at more than three or four sources. Um, let's look at the first one here. We have a five microcoulomb charge. Uh, separated by 0.2 meters from a negative 5 microcoulomb charge, so it's a dipole, and then some points Z, which is 0.04 meters to the right of the negative 5 microcoulomb charge. We want to get the potential, the electrostatic potential, at that point Z. Okay, so it's not a vector equation, but it looks a little like one, right? Because you have these two contributions. Phi of 1 at Z plus phi uh, of Q2 at Z. So we have Q1 is a source which creates a potential at Z and Q2 is a source which creates a potential at Z. So you just add those values together, being careful about the sign, right? So nine by 10 to nine times five by 10 to minus six over, well, let's see, from one to Z, you got 0.2 meters and another 0.04, so that's 0.24 meters. And plus nine by 10 to nine times negative five by 10 to the minus six over 0.04 and you add them together and you get negative 9.38 by 10 to the five volts. So that is my net potential at uh, Z. Then they ask, what's the net potential at M? M is the uh, midpoint. 
So you got 9 by 10 to the 9 times 5 by 10 to the 6th over 0.1, right? The midpoint between 1 and 2 is 0.2 meters is the full distance between them. So the midpoint is half plus 9 by 10 to the 9th times negative 5 by 10 to the 6th over 0.1. So the value for the electric potential at the midpoint between charge 1 and charge 2 is 0. Business is about being zero electric potential. That's that's important. So we talk about work and things like that later on. Anyway, so that is the value for for that question. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here, and now I'm on page 21, and I have to do a rotation, another rotation, and I'm going to move up here. to page 21. Okay, so on page 21, here just, uh, you see how these ones are more fun, right? You don't have to worry about uh, directions. Uh, we have um, the net potential as Z so I have a 2 microcoulomb, a 5 microcoulomb, and an 8 microcoulomb charge, all contributing to create the electric potential at Z. And you see the data there. So the phi net at Z is phi of A at Z plus B at Z plus C at Z. Plug in the numbers, and you get 1.74 by 10 to the 7th joules per coulomb. Okay, let me just check that I'm recording because I realized I did a pause there before. And uh, yeah, good, good. It's still flashing. Okay. Oh, let me change the the width here. I like. There you go. That's better. Okay. So some quick notes on potential. Uh, a proton naturally will move from an area of a high potential to area of a low potential, whereas an electron will do the reverse. And when we talk about batteries, that's an important uh, concept. And uh, once in a blue moon, we come across a unit of energy different than joules, different than ergs, which is a unit we don't even talk about, but you may have heard somewhere, but a unit known as an electron volt. And an electron volt is a um, equivalent of 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules, because the electric potential energy is Q times phi, so if we have the charge of an electron, just the absolute value, let's say 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, and uh, we're uh, going to talk about a potential difference of one, then my electric potential energy is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. So an electron volt, you sometimes hear, especially in the high energy physics, they talk about MEVs, particle accelerators, stuff like that, millions of electron volts. So I see here how I can convert 3.5 by 10 to the minus 14 joules into electron volts. One electron volts, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules, not coulombs, joules. So the joules cancel out and I get 2.2 by 10 to 5 electron volts, which turns out to be 0.22 MeV, millions of electron volts. So we'll see that sometimes, not often. Okay, so we've looked so far today at electric potential energy and electric potential. We've got one more concept to look at today, and today may, of course, be two, two days, and all the days seem to be blurring into one really long day as you agree with me I think uh, the potential difference okay so that's the difference in Phi is known as the voltage or the pot diff so it's capital V I try to put serifs on it so it doesn't look like volume or velocity but sometimes I forget a serif are those little ticks on the top in the font when I draw the letter V. See, I put those little ticks those are called serif and sometimes you see fonts called sans serif sans those of you who know your Francais means without, so without the ticks. But I like to put the ticks in, so hopefully that won't tick you off. See, that's why I said the whole thing for that one lousy joke. So the potential difference is the change in electric potential. So it's phi final 
minus phi initial and we're going to see right now that that also is equal to the work per charge. So delta phi is a scalar, scalar spelled like that, S-C-A-L-A-R. Uh, units are volts. Um, how do I prove it? Well, work is the change in electric potential energy. So let's say we're talking about Q2 as the charge we're focusing on. So Q2 phi final minus Q2 phi initial because E electric is Q times phi because phi is E electric over Q. I can factor out the Q2 phi final minus phi initial. So Q2 delta it would be well Q2 delta phi, which is the voltage. Okay, so those are important equations. Let's see how this all works. So here's equation one. We got a voltage of 10 and a initial potential of 100 volts. My final is going to be 100 plus 10, which is 110 volts. So my voltage is 110 volts, 10 plus 100. Okay, so my phi final is... Um, Let's see, I started with 100, I added 10, 110, okay? How much work is needed to move a 300 microcoulomb charge through a potential difference of six volts? So let's call the 300 microcoulomb, let's call it Q2. Some people just call it Q, fine. Um, remember a volt is a joule per coulomb, so if the potential difference is six volts, I might not know where the initial and the final potential are, but the difference is six volts, so that difference times 300 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs gives me 1.8 by 10 to the minus 3 joules and then I can convert that to electron volts by dividing by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules and then to millions of electron volts by dividing by 1 by 10 to the 6 electron volts. It's interesting, let me just write it again, W equals QV. Let's think about it for a second. Doing work and let's think of it as um, like lifting bricks, okay? So if I have more bricks that I'm lifting from one place to another, then I gotta be doing more work. So if I got more charge that I wanna take from one place to another, I gotta do more work. Let's think of voltage as the slope, right? If the I'm pushing these bricks up a very shallow little hill, then I don't do as much work as if I'm lifting them up almost 90 degrees, right? So you can think of voltage as a gradient. In fact, we use that word for voltage as a potential gradient. It's one of the definitions of voltage. So put those together, charge times voltage, Q times V equals the work. Okay. Uh, here on page 22, we have another example. Uh, let's say we were using 50 million electron volts to move a mole of protons through a potential difference of V of some value. So the pot diff, potential difference equals, oh, there's bells and whistles going around beside me. Potential difference equals uh, the voltage um, equals work over the uh, charge. So 50 million electron volts, I convert that to joules. One electron volt is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules and then divide that by how much charge there is. Oh, I threw in a chemistry thing here. How about that? A mole, 6.02 by 10 to 23 uh, elementary charges is a mole. I'm sure you all remember the mole. In fact, some of you I know, there's three of you right now who are taking both chemistry and physics with me. Aren't you lucky, right? 6.02 by 10 to 23 times uh, 1.6 by 10 to the minus coulombs per EC. So I'm going to get the coulombs in total, joules per coulomb. Joules divided by coulombs is the volts, and I get 8.3 by 10 to minus 17 volts, which is a really small number, but that's what the calculation tells us. Okay. Example four, nine volt battery. Now, just reading late, lately uh, that when you store nine volt batteries at home, keep them in their original packaging. Uh, don't uh, have them like just loose in a drawer. Uh, with a bunch of metal around them because the batteries could overheat, which is not a good thing. So, 9-volt battery, 
ba battery delivers 50 joules of energy to how many electrons? Okay, so a battery is a pump. It pumps up those electrons, pumps up the jam, right? So the charge is the work over the voltage. And I want to put a little serifs. I said I would do that, right? So 50 joules over 9 volts, 5.56 coulombs. So you are delivering 50 joules of energy to push up 5.56 coulombs worth of electrons and you do the conversion between ECs and coulombs it turns out to be 3.47 by 10 to the 19 electrons and um, that's how that works okay five how much work must be done to increase the potential of a 3 by 10 to minus 7 charge by 120 kilovolts Kilovolts isn't the same as kilo electron volts, right? Kilovolts is just a thousand volts. So 120,000 volts times 3 by 10 to minus 7 coulombs gives me the work done to increase the potential. I don't know the initial potential. I don't know the final potential, but I know the work done to increase the potential by 120,000 volts. It turns out to be 3.6 by 10 to the minus 2 joules. Okay? So... All of these uh, examples, uh, we haven't said whether the potential is uniform or non-uniform. The ones with the divided by R, those examples we've done earlier, those are non-uniform because it depends on the position in uh, R. But there are special cases where we can look at uniform electric fields. So this is, and how they work with voltage and things like that, this is on page 22. Uh, to page 24. So let's take a look at that. And um, so, okay, what's going on here? Um, uniform electric field. So I mentioned this before. Here's a uh, parallel plate setup or parallel plate apparatus. They sometimes call it that. Oh, can I spell that right? Apparatus. Yeah. So, um, you have a power source like a battery which causes a separation of charge so here i got this top plate with a bunch of positives bottom plate with an equal amount of negatives and uh, little d is the distance uh, between the plates so what we're saying here is i've created a, a potential difference with the electric field being constant between the plates and zero outside it can be shown that the voltage equals the electric field times the distance between the plates. So the electric field is the voltage over the distance between the plates, uh, which is uh, units of volts per meter or, or newtons per coulomb. So um, if the electric field is uniform, V equals ED or E equals V over D. Sometimes distance between the plates is written as DBP. So let's see some examples here. Example one, calculate the electric field when you have a five millimeter distance between the plates and 300 volts across the plates. So the electric field would be 300 divided by five by 10 to the minus three or six by 10 to the four volts per meter. So anywhere within that uh, sandwich you have a electric field of 6 by 10 to the 4th volts per meter. But the sandwich is really uh, how you can start a capacitor, and capacitors are important electronic uh, components which store energy and therefore memory. So any memory on your PVR or your calculator, well, they need capacitors uh, within them. Charging up a, uh, a flash on your camera has a capacitor in them. Nowadays, it's hardly any time to charge up a a flash on a on a camera but in the old days it could take 10 15 20 seconds to uh, have your camera charge up so that the flash could work again so uh, there are practical reasons why we uh, look at all this okay so that was the first example second example of uniform electric field we want to calculate the di distance between uh, the plates if the potential difference is 90 volts and the strength of the electric field is 400 volts per meter. So here's my equation, V equals ED, so D equals V over E, voltage per electric field. So 90 over 400, which is 0.225 meters, multiplied by 100, 
22.5 centimeters. Okay, let's look at a few more here. Uh, this is now I'm on page 23. What potential difference must be maintained across parapo parallel plates one centimeter apart, so D is 0.01 meter, to make a uniform electric field of 6 by 10 to the 20th newtons per EC. Remember before I said sometimes electric fields are, aren't in newtons per coulomb, but they're in newtons per EC. So uh, I'm just going to convert that uh, by dividing by newtons in 1 EC, and 1 EC is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Yeah, so I get divided by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, so my electric field is 3.75 by 10 to the 39 uh, newtons per coulomb. And then my voltage is the electric field times the distance between the plates. So 3.75 by 10 to the 39 times 0.01, 3.75 by 10 to the 37 volts. So that is a big number, but that is uh, my voltage. Okay. Remember, you don't have to watch the entire screencast at one time. You can take a break, have a Coca-Cola, and then come back to it, right? So, example four, uh, we want to calculate the work and the force needed to move a two microcoulomb charge from the negative plate to a positive plate, given a voltage of 1,000 volts and a distance between the plates of 60 centimeters. Okay, so let's just draw that out on the side here. So here's my plates. I'm not going to draw the battery in. And I'll have a positive top plate and negative bottom plate in this example. And we're going to um, move the charge from the negative to the positive plate. So it's a two microcoulomb charge. It wants to be there. So you have to find some method using some other charges or something. So this is two microcoulombs. So to, to push it up against the grain, right? The electric field lines are going to go, the E lines are going to go down, right? But you're going to push up against it. So you're going up against the grain, as they say. So first, let's calculate the strength of the electric field. The voltage is 1,000. Distance between the plates is 0 0.6 meters. So 1666.7 newtons per coulomb. Also, you could write it as 1666.7 volts per meter right? One volt per meter, as we wrote before, one volt per meter is the same as one newton per coulomb. Okay, so now the work done, well, the work is Q times V, uh, and V is a thousand, so I can just write um, two by ten to minus six times a thousand. Work is Q times V, so two by ten to minus three joules. If I want to be fancy, and I can only this, do this for uniform electric fields. I can write the work as QED, which I think you use in math for some like derivations, some Latin thing. Uh, Q times E times D. So 2 by 10 to minus 6 times the electric field, 1666.7 times 0.6. And I get 2 by 10 to the minus 3 joules. So that is the work. And the force is... Uh, Force is always QE, but E is V over D, so I can also write it as QV over D. But again, only for uniform electric fields. So Q is 2 by 10 to minus 6 times 1,000 divided by 0.6, and I get 3.3 .3 by 10 to minus 3 newtons. Okay, and let's try example 5. We had a little interruption, but that happens sometimes. So, uh... It's like, oh, there, because it's, it's like Mr. Shahinvar appearing. Oh, and then we all make all these funny jokes and everybody laughs. Okay, so uh, we want to find uh, um, in the uh, fifth case here where um, we have uh, the electric field. Just stare at this for a second um, and take a look at the chart here. Uh, Just telling my someone that I'm recording a class. Let's 
talk to you later. 15 minutes to this person. So uh, we have here uh, the uh, four microcoulomb charge is falling down. There it is, four microcoulombs. And we have our electric field lines are going up from the positive to the negative. The distance between the plates is 0.25 meters. So we want to find the electric field strength, the work, and the force associated with this. Uh, we might as well determine the voltage as well. They didn't tell us the voltage, did they? Uh, oh, it got cut off, didn't it? We have to get the voltage or else how could we answer this question? There isn't enough information. So assume the voltage is 100 volts. Don't assume it is. It was. It just got cut off on the question. So it's 100 volts. So my electric field is the uh, voltage, 100 volts, which delta phi over the distance between the plates, 0.25 meters. Um, and 100 divided by 0.25 is 400 uh, volts per meter. And then uh, the work done to uh, push this 4 microcoulomb charge down to a place it doesn't want to be. It doesn't want to be with all the positive charges, but if you want to force it to get there for whatever reason, it's QED or QV. So 4 by 10 to the minus 6 times 1,000 is... Uh, Q, it's Q, 4 by 10 to the minus 6 times 1,000 is, mm -hmm. something looks odd about this, doesn't it? Let's look at this, Q, E, D, well my Q, oh my Q isn't 4, my Q is 1, oh, sorry, my Q is 1 microcoulomb, there you go. So that figured it out. So 1 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs times 400 uh, newtons per coulomb times 0.25. And that gives me 1 by 10 to the minus 4 joules. Okay, so that's the work. 1 by 10 to the minus 4. If I did QV, it will be 1 by 10 to the minus 3. Um, No, 1 by 10 to the minus 6 times 100, so 1 by 10 to the minus 4 joules. Okay, so my Q is 1 microcoulomb, my voltage is 100 volts, my distance between the plates is 0.25 meters. Okay, let's write that all in. Q equals 1 microcoulomb. Voltage equals 100 volts. Distance between the plates is 0.25 meters. Okay, given all that, electric field is 100 over 0.25, 400 volts per meter. The work is QED, 1 times 400 times uh, 0.25, 1 microcoulomb, 1 by 10 to minus 6 coulombs, got to be in coulombs, not microcoulombs, 1 by 10 to minus 4 joules. My force is Q times E or QV over D, 1 by 10 to minus 6 times 100 over 0.25, 4 by 10 to minus 4 newtons. There you go. Hopefully that'll straighten up all that for you. Question six. How much work is needed to move a five picocoulomb charge? Pico is five uh, by 10 to minus pico, 10 to minus nine coulombs. Four nanometers. Pico was not minus nine. Pico was 10 to minus 12. Nano was 10 to minus nine. 4 by 10 to the minus 9 meters. So we want to move a 5 picocoulomb charge, 5 by 10 to the minus 12 coulombs, 4 nanometers through a uniform electric field of 8 kilovolts per meter, or 8,000 volts per meter. So here I'm not even talking about parallel plates. I don't know what set, set this up. All I know is I have a uniform electric field, so work equals QED. So 5 by 10 to the minus 12 is my charge. My electric field is 8 by 10 to the 3 volts per meter, and I'm moving it 4 by 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 1.6 by 10 to the minus 16 joules. Okay? Now, we were talking about pushing these charges up and down. What speed can these charges get as they move up and down? in a uniform field. Uh, so that's what we're looking on here on page 24, which is the motion of uh, 
subatomic particles in uniform electric fields. So um, here we have an example, and this is says a thousand. It's supposed to say a thousand volts, and we're moving a um, particle from the positive to the negative end, four millimeters, which is four by ten to the minus three meters. So the electric field is a thousand over four by ten to the minus three, or two point five by ten to the five volts per meter. So that's the electric field. And we want to get, assuming we dropped, it's a proton, which is what we're dropping here, from the top of the positive plate down. It's going to pick up speed. Better not be more than the speed of light, uh, but it's going to pick up speed. We want to get the speed at the bottom. And here's the equation that we're going to use. The speed is the square root of 2 times the charge in coulombs times the voltage over the mass of the particle. You prove that by looking at conservation of energy. Your change in electric potential energy is going to be equal to your change in kinetic energy. Electric potential energy uh, change is work. Work is Q times V. Change in electric potential energy, well, if we're only talking about the final because it's stationary at the beginning, so there is no kinetic energy. So Q times big V is 1 half M times little v squared isolate for little v and you get the answer. Then you can convince yourself that the units work. So to get the final speed of a particle when launched from one place to another in a direction either with the grain or against the grain, uh, this is how you work it. So you plug in two times the mass of a, or this is the charge of a proton is 1.6 by 10 to minus 19 coulombs going through a voltage of 1,000 volts divided by the mass, 1.67 by 10 to minus 27 kilograms. So we're going to take the uh, square root of that, and we get 4.38 by 10 to the 5 meters per second. So that's how fast the proton is going. So we are accelerating the proton. This is a elementary particle accelerator, right? We're moving the proton from one plate to another. Um, some of you might ask, what if we move the proton so it starts off like perpendicular to the electric field lines? Well, if you do that, you're going to get a uh, projectile motion and hook that in with magnetic fields and you start creating a cathode ray tube or a mass spectrometer or all sorts of other instruments that use varying electric and magnetic fields. So it becomes real then, doesn't it? Okay, now suppose instead of launching from the top of the plate, we launch the proton from the, mid, from the middle, like the middle point of the plate. So would you be traveling half as fast at the bottom? Or the answer is no, you wouldn't uh, because of the square root business. So if the proton started from rest at the midpoint, then you would go 2Q, but your voltage, you aren't feeling the whole thousand volts you're just feeling 500. So 2 times 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 times 500 divided by the mass of a uh, proton, 1.67 by 10 to the minus, I don't know what it says, 5 here, it should say by 10 to the minus 27. So you'd end up with 3.1 by 10 to the 5 meters per second. Let's punch that out on the calculator just to be sure. So let's see, 2 times 1.6, so 3.2 by 10 to the negative 19 times 500 divided by 1.67 by 10 to the negative 27th, take the square root, 3.1 by 10 to the 5 meters per second. So that is uh, the velocity of the proton. Okay, let's do one more here. Let's say we are launching an alpha particle, which you have two protons and two neutrons. That's known as an alpha particle, the mass. 6.6 .6 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. That will be given. There's no charge for neutrons. They're free, but protons there are. So 2 times 1.6, so 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So we want to launch the alpha particle. Um, and I have to give you the voltage, right? So the voltage got cut off there. Let's say it's 400 volts. Okay, so 400 volts is my voltage. And so the final speed is 2QV over M. So 2 times 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19 times 400 
divided by the mass of the alpha particle which we given. So that alpha particle is being accelerated as it moves through the uh, electric field to a speed of 1.97 by 10 to the 5 meters per second. Now some people say, oh, well, it's also being accelerated due to gravity. Uh, okay, but that is a lot more minor than, than this. So, uh, right? So, uh, let's see. You can find all sorts of videos about that if you really want. Um, what's this one here? Here we have an electron moving up. So, through 850 volts, and uh, here it's moving up the complete from the negative to the positive plate, which is five millimeters apart. So, first let's calculate the electric field the question asks. So, 850 is my volts divided by my meters, 0 0.005, so I get 1.7 by 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. And then my final velocity is 2 qv over m, so 2 times. And here you just take, we are going to take square roots of negative numbers, right? So just take the absolute value of the charge of the electron. So 2 times the absolute value of negative 1.6 by 10 to minus 19 times the voltage through its moving 850 over the mass of the electron, 9.11 by 10 to minus 31 kilograms. And you get 1.73 by 10 to the 7 meters per second. So electrons can accelerate up. Uh, last topic, equipotential surface on page 25 is just if you have potentials, which are all the same value, you can join those potentials together with a line or a circle. And along that surface or shell in 3D, there is no work done because work is Q times V. But if the potentials are the same, then the potential difference is zero. So no work is done if you're moving from one point to another along an equa, equa equal potential surface. If you're moving from one equa potential surface to a different one, well, yeah, then work is done. Okay, so that was another topic. So on the rest of page 25, you see a summary of the equations that are going to be useful. And in our next lecture, we're going to do some review for this unit. Okay, sounds good. Have fun. I'm going to just uh, stop this here if I can. Stop the recording. There.